Hello everyone, Jay Whitner here for State's Headline. We do a quick recap of what's going on each week in the State's universe. And today we're going to be talking about the fourth week of June 2018. Our first item has to do with SpaceX. There's some news about the Raptor engine, SpaceX developing for use in the BFR. And the idea is that they're going to be using super alloys to make these engines. These super alloys maintain their strength despite very high operating temperatures, high operating pressures, they resist oxidation. And fundamentally, they allow a very high number of reuse, hundreds of flights per engine, which ties in very well with the future launch, launch cadence that SpaceX is planning for the BFR, and, and this should help facilitate the um, return to the moon, on Mars, and so forth. NASA has been asked by the Trump administration to take a look at converting some of NASA's field centers to federal labs like the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California. This is not a new idea. This was discussed roughly 15 years ago, I guess, to convert some of the NASA field centers to these federal labs. The idea is, is operating efficiency, it's cost reduction, and certainly JPL has achieved a very strong result for a very long period of time. So the idea has merit, but there's a lot of uh, political strings and issues attached. So we'll see if this, this initiative goes in right. So news on Blue Origin. You see here an artist's conception of the New Glenn rocket. And we're talking about the, uh, the life cycle. And they've said previously that the engines that they are working on the, uh, the BE-4 engine should be good for 100 flights, 100 uses. But the newer news, at least to me it was new, is that the first stage of the new blend is spec to last for 25 flights. So they didn't really get into the details of the news source that I was looking at, but presumably this means that the engines will be pulled out of the uh, the first stage when it reached the end of its life and reinstalled in a fresh first stage. So you have uh, a few change outs to, to match up four first stages with, uh, with one engine. So more plans, more uh, scenes behind the curtain about what Blue Origin is planning for their next rocket. Nice news from Made in State one of the uh, premier space companies right now. They are the, the big leader in 3D printing in space, making stuff in space, as, as the name would suggest. The news item has to do with their Arcanaut. If you're familiar with 3D printing, you know, especially the desktop systems that you may have seen, the item is built inside of a box. So there's various constraints on how high, how wide the item can be to get to the box. The idea behind Arcanaut is 3D printing outside the box. So you can make arbitrarily large structures. The structures would be printed. Uh, the components could be assembled uh, all in space. So that you end up making really, really large truss structures, mirrors, uh, a wide variety of things. Really. And the news item is they are looking at 2023 that Arcanaut in operation which will truly revolutionize our space capabilities. SpaceX want to launch for the Falcon Heavy from the Air Force. This is a classified launch, so there's not a whole lot that I can tell you about this, but it is an Air Force contract. The launch is going to take place from the Kennedy Space Center. The timing of the launch is 2020 is the target. And I believe this will be the second launch contract from a uh, military source for the Falcon Heavy. The, uh, the first one, I think, is, is not really classified, but it's what it is. So that's all we have. The Japanese spacecraft has reached an asteroid called Ryugu. And this asteroid is going to do various visual scans 
of the asteroid, take a lot of imagery of it. So it's also going to collect samples for return. I believe they're going to fire a probe into the asteroid, which will knock off a chunk of the asteroid that then it will retrieve and, and bring back to Earth for, uh, for more analysis. So I, I don't know what the Japanese policies are on planetary protection. And I would hope this would not be an issue in the first place for an asteroid. But congrats to Japan for getting their spacecraft close to Ryuzu and positioned it to get these samples and get this information. We've all been waiting impatiently since the retirement of the space shuttle for the next launch vehicle that would be capable of carrying Americans into orbit from American soil on American craft. So what you're seeing is one of the two contenders, the two commercial crew um, organizations, really, are Boeing and SpaceX. What you're seeing here right now is the SpaceX capsule. This is the crew version of the Dragon. And this is the one that's going to have its flight test in August, hopefully. This will be an uncrewed test. Nobody will be aboard. And the idea is to have a follow-on test hopefully by December, but there are rumors that uh, both firms going in space like so have a schedule issues. So let's say no earlier than December of this year, we could have a crewed mission using this Dragon to take people up to the space station. And that would be a, a great milestone in terms of returning uh, the United States to a position where we can take people into space. So, it's been a long time coming. Keep your fingers crossed and good thoughts for going in space to tackle this complicated issue. Bad news on James Webb. The James Webb Space Telescope has been delayed. The new launch date for this telescope is now targeted for March 2021. And in general, the way these things work is, is uh, project stretches out, the costs go up. You have to keep people on salary for a long period of time and so on and so forth. So this means the cost of the mission is going to go up by an estimated $800 million. I believe this is going to require congressional approval because it's breaking into the cap, which means basically there's a certain percentage that an operation or a project can exceed it estimated uh, money for the budget. And if it, the excess is over a certain percent, that triggers congressional oversight. So hopefully the Congress will see fit to finish off the James Webb telescope. It certainly has invested a lot of time and money in getting this far. Interesting news from, uh, interesting news from Enceladus. If you're not familiar with this, this is one of the moons of Saturn. And it is a really strong candidate for finding life. And everything that people keep seeing about it seems to indicate that there's uh, you know, all the raw material is there. That life could be there. We don't know if there's life there at this point, but it could be. What we know is there's liquid water, there's complex organics, there's energy. There's no energy anywhere in the system, the water would be frozen. So, very exciting information about this. And it would be really nice if we could drum up some money and do a series of missions there to really pin this down a little bit more and understand this moon more in greater detail. We had a launch uh, by SpaceX Falcon 9. It looked fairly normal, although it was, uh, it was a night launch, which is a little bit extra drama with the, the bright light of the launch itself. What makes it especially interesting though is this was the last flight of the Block 4 Falcon 9 because we've come up now with the Block 5. So this is the marks the end of the, the Block 4 period and beginning of the Block 5 period. Also this booster was flown once before and it was refurbished in record time by, by a wide margin. SpaceX is demonstrating the ability to turn these things around more rapidly. And it's sort of a tour de force for the ability in that the booster had flown before, 
capsule that the Dragon had flown before. So we're seeing uh, better gear, more reusability, more rapid turnaround time, uh, all in pursuit of the Holy Grail, which is sort of aircraft style operation. That's it for Space Headlines, covering the fourth week, of June 2018. Hope you enjoyed our show, and we'll see you in about a week for the first week of July. Take care.